Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Instagram at JR from PTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create brush presets by using elements from photographs. We'll start with this image of clouds in the sky, and we'll select this cloud here to create a brush. That brush will help us simulate the effect of fog or smoke. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna use this image here that contains clouds. If you wanna follow along, you can download this image from my website. There is a link to it right below in the description. So the first thing that we need to do is look at the element that we're gonna use to create our brush. And I'm really liking this cloud right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that by clicking on the lasso tool and just make a selection around that cloud, like so. Then I'm gonna press Control C, that's Command C on the Mac to copy, and I'm gonna put this in a new document. So I'm gonna to go to File, New, then press OK, then press Control V, Command V on the Mac to paste. Now we're gonna use the Channels panel to extract the cloud from the background. So I already know that I want the cloud, of course, so that's gonna be in white, and the cloud is already white, and then everything else needs to be black. So what I'm gonna to do to help me out a little bit is I'm just gonna create a new black solid, click and drag that to the bottom, then go into the channels panel, and now we can work with the channels. Look for the channel that's got the most contrast between the clouds and the sky. In this case, it's gonna be the red channel. I'm gonna click and drag that channel over to the new channel icon to duplicate it. And in the red copy, we're gonna make some adjustments. I'm gonna go into image, adjustments, levels, and I'm gonna use these sliders to remove anything that was part of the sky and just keep the clouds. Then I'm gonna press okay. I'm gonna press control, command, and click on the channel thumbnail, which is gonna load the bright pixels, in this case, the clouds. Then I'm gonna go back into the layers panel. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna fill the new layer with black. Black is our foreground color. So I'm gonna hold Alt and Backspace. That's Option and Backspace on the Mac. With the selection still active, I'm just gonna go into Image and Crop. Then I'm gonna go into Edit, Define Brush Preset. And I can call this brush whatever I like. So I'm just gonna call it Clouds and press OK. Now I'm gonna press B on the keyboard to go into my brush tool and notice that automatically Photoshop selects that brush that we just created. I'm gonna go and work on this document that I had created just before we started. It's simply a document with a black background and an empty layer. If I paint with white using the brush tool and the brush preset we just created, we get this result. Obviously that doesn't look like clouds, but we can work with the brush panel by clicking on this icon here and making some adjustments. First, we're gonna click on Shape Dynamics and we're gonna adjust the size jitter. This randomizes the size of the brush as we paint. We're also gonna adjust the angle jitter. So the angle is different as we paint, like so. Then we're gonna add a little bit of scattering so just separate it just a little bit. And I'm gonna undo those paint strokes just so we can have a little more room to continue painting. Then I'm gonna click on transfer and adjust the opacity jitter and use pen pressure to control the jitter. Now, if you don't have a Wacom tablet, that's okay. Just set it to normal, but you won't have the advantage of painting lightly and just getting very faint clouds. Or if you push hard on the tablet and paint, you get those brighter clouds. This is looking pretty good. It's already looking a lot like clouds and smoke or smog, which is what we were going for. So that's how you would create the brush. Now you can obviously make more changes if you wanted to adjust the brush by adjusting the size jitter or any of the other controls. But I think these are the ones you're gonna find most useful. I'm also gonna increase the flow jitter just a little bit as well. And I think that'll give us a much nicer result. Yeah, and I think it does. Notice how it looks more three-dimensional now than the one we did here earlier. And I think this is looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna show how to apply it to an image. In this case, it's a composite. 
This is something that I did just for fun. You probably saw it on my Behance account. Behance.net slash JR from PTC. I actually have an animated GIF that shows how this was created. But anyway, you can sort of see some mist and fog here on the beach and in the water here next to the boat. So that was created using a similar brush to what I just showed you how to create. So again, just to show you, I can start painting lightly here and add just a little bit more fog into the scene. And if I push harder, the opacity increases, but I don't think I need to do that in this case. I can sort of build on it and it looks a little more realistic. So this is what we had before and this is after. Now here's one little trick. If you're painting with a brush like this and using white, but you want the fog to take a specific color so it fits better within the scene, you can create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. Clip it by clicking on this icon here or pressing Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac, and clicking on Colorize and selecting the color that you want to use. In this case, maybe a blue color. Increase the saturation and decrease the brightness. Notice how now that fog has color. So I'll choose a different color just so you can see maybe an orange color. And a color like this would be very useful if you were trying to simulate a dust cloud or something like that. And as you can see, it's very easy to create these brushes. All you need to do is find the right element from your photograph, select it, mask it out, and define it as a brush preset. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoy the tutorial, don't forget to click that like button and share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Photoshop training channel now. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.